Mr. Ham was born in 1805 in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, he died in 1889 at the age of 84. So, lived a, a good life. He was quite an entrepreneur, but made most of his fortune in the lead mining business. He also had a ferry, ferry boat business down by the river. He had a tannery, um, farming. He owned a lot of, like over 300 acres up on the north side of Dubuque. And, uh, and so, he, in those, well, in those days, you, in our day, you'd call him a wheeler dealer. <laughs> but he was very, quite an entrepreneur. And uh, he was married twice. His first wife, Zerilda, uh, they had five children by his first wife. His second wife was Margaret, and, they, and Margaret and him had two children, so he had seven children. Back in uh, 1911, the daughter Sarah was living there, and she sold the house to the city of Dubuque for $10,000. So the city of Dubuque still owns the Ham House, and the Dubuque County Historical Society leases it for a dollar a year. So, and uh, so the city takes care of all the outside, the mowing of the grass and repairs and such, and the Historical Society takes care of the inside. They just put a new copper roof on, and all of the gutters and downspouts are all copper. It's a beautiful place. I hope all of you can come and visit next summer. Although Bonnie was talking about haunted Halloween, um, the Matthias Ham House is on the register of Iowa for being a haunted house. And uh, obviously the batteries. I've were. never seen any haunted. Uh, <laughs> We do have one girl that she swears she saw a little boy the other day up on the stair steps. But, uh, so, uh, but we're not we're not supposed to promote haunted houses. <laughs> but uh, and I've never seen any spirits, so I hope I never do. <laughs> but anyway, um, but on October twenty first, it's a Saturday. If you aren't doing anything. Uh, we're going to have a haunting at the Ham House. Um, we're going to have children's games, and uh, there's going to be a fortune teller, and uh, but hopefully no spirits are there. <laughs> and then a few weekends before Christmas, um, the Ham House is open. I believe on just Saturday and Sunday and the house will be decorated uh, with garland and, and Christmas trees that have all the candles and such on and so it, it's very pretty uh, in the, <coughs> for Christmas time so yeah so like I say if, if you uh, uh, can make it you know if you can come some of those days or, or whatever so Okay. Um. <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> no, I can't. That, that's okay. the point. Well, we can start. We we can start with this one here. It's just gonna go through it. Will it go through that fast? Or? to take these flyers home if you'd like. I've got more here. Um, I do have, if you'd like to look, I do have a flyer if you wish to become a member of the uh, National Mississippi River. The
the National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium and the Matthias Ham House, uh, they both belong to the Dubuque County Historical Society and, uh, and we are employed by the Dubuque County Historical Society. A lot of people ask if we're volunteers and we are not and, uh, and so uh, we do belong. Getting back to the, the, the city owns the outside of, of the Ham House and uh, the Historical Society owns the uh, inside. Sometimes there's a little friction, you know, if there's a repair that has to be done, the city will say, oh, it's, it's the, ha the Historical Society's job. Or the Historical Society will say, no, it's the, the uh, is, you know, the city's job. So sometimes a little friction there. I do have a postcard that we have in uh, the gift shop. And you may recognize the lady in standing in the front. I just happened to be working that day. <laughs> so that was... <clears throat> I do have some pictures here um, of the front of the home. Well, it might be easier just to use these pictures, I think. Okay, whatever works. Or we can pass these around. Okay. Get you that. Um, like I say, the house was built in 1857, and it was built by John Francis Raig. Uh, Italian at architecture is, uh, is, is it, it's built. On the 4th of July, we always, can everybody hear me? Yeah. On the 4th of July, we always have an old-fashioned ice cream social uh, where on the veranda they serve ice cream and cake and then there's a bunch of, uh, oh, Civil War guys well, not Civil War guys, but a reenactment, you know, where they shoot the cannon off every, about every hour. And, uh, and then uh, the 4th of July is, I think, the only day where they give free tours through the house. And this year we had like a thousand people go through. Oh, wow. so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful place. Uh, when Mr. Ham first lived in his log cabin, uh, would have been over in this area here, all these buildings to the north of the Ham House belong to the city. And uh, so uh, uh, this is the, a greenhouse, and that's where they grow all their flowers whenever you go to Dubuque. And like down, if you've ever been on the river walk downtown, beautiful river walk, uh, all the hanging baskets. Uh, and was grown in this greenhouse up here by the city. So, um, also two outside uh, is an old granary built in 18, the 1840s. It was located south of Dubuque. Now it's just a storage shed, uh, but people donated uh, to the Dubuque County Historical Society. Um, we do have a simulation of a lead mine, and, uh, and we have a gentleman, you'll, you'll notice on the flyer on the back, there's a bearded guy. He's the only one, he's the only guy that works for the, the ham house, and he's very knowledgeable on Dubuque. If you had any questions about Dubuque, I didn't know a lot about Dubuque, you know, born and raised here in Maquoketa, so. We didn't get to Dubuque, but I learned a lot about Dubuque, and he's very knowledgeable. And then we have about uh, 12 girls also that are like me and, and give tours through the house. So, uh, so the simulation of the lead mine um, is just, we explain about how they first started digging in the mines all over Dubuque. Uh, a lot of times homes uh, if you buy a home in Dubuque, especially up in that area, they'll have sinkholes. You know, they'll be out in their backyard and fall <laughs> into a sinkhole. That's probably where a mine would have been at that time. Uh, 
like I say, Mr. Ham made most of his fortune in lead mining. You've probably seen the shot tower in Dubuque. Um, the story behind that is the, the men would take the lead up to, there's windows at every, all different levels of the shot tower. And at each level where there's a window, there's a different size screen. So when they would melt the lead, the lead, melted lead would come down through these screens. It would go into a cold water bath at the bottom. And then that, the different screens would make different size shot for the war and such. Um, otherwise, the, the digging in the lead mines, they would melt the lead, pour it into these troughs, and the troughs would be called pigs, because that's what pigs eat out of, was <laughs> troughs. So the troughs would, of, uh, of lead would be sent to St. Louis, They'd sell their, their lead down in St. Louis and then bring supplies back. So, on top of the, the lead mine is called, oh, you can't really see, can you? Okay. Uh, on top of the lead mine is this contraption here, and that's called a windlass. Uh, two strong guys would be up on the top here. When they would first start digging in the mine, these two guys on top would lower them down into the mine on a bucket, in a bucket, and then they would dig all day, fill the buckets up with lead, hopefully lead, and then these guys on top would, would uh, turn the, the cranks and, uh, and then they would bring the, hopefully the lead up. So that's called a windlass. This here is just a hole in the ground and that's called a badger hole. A lot of times the miners, when they came up from Missouri, um, they wouldn't take the time to build a log cabin, and uh, so they would just dig a hole in the ground, like a badger would, and then they would put a, a, a roof over, and uh, then that is where they would live, just in the hole in the ground. Our log cabin, we're quite proud of that. The log cabin is called a dog trot log cabin because of the space in between. Uh, it's actually, usually when you see a log cabin, it's just one building. Well, with the, it's actually two buildings with the space in between. Uh, and that would bring shelter uh, to small animals in the summertime and in the wintertime, you know, protection from the, the snow and such, too. Uh, the log cabin is the oldest standing building in Iowa. It was located downtown Dubuque. When they started doing some revitalizing downtown, um, it was discovered. It was covered with, with uh, siding, and they found it was a log cabin. Then doing in research, they found it was the oldest standing building in Iowa, so they moved it up to Eagle Point Park. Then in 19, around 1965, uh, good year, that's the year I was married, <laughs> um, there was so much vandalism <coughs> up at the park, so some people got together and they moved the log cabin to the Ham House site, and, uh, and it's been there ever since 1965. Uh, and then, like I say, the, the front of the house, this back part of the house, this is where you would enter when you are in the parking lot and you have to climb up this long hill. Uh, or you can park behind here where there, you can't park behind here when the, during the week because the city guys um, park there and they get a little upset if us ladies park back here. So we, it, there is quite a climb like going down. Um, this sidewalk here, but that's the parking lot. So, but this part of the house was their cottage when they moved from their log cabin. They moved to this cottage, and then this big part of the house. That's when they started in 1854 to 57, adding on really to this cottage. So, um, the back part of the house, the lime is all rough. The front part is real smooth. 
and that was to make it a good impression when you had guests um, because usually the guests never got to see the back part of the house so uh, they didn't have to smooth the back part out because your guests never it was more uh, how everything looked a show of wealth and such so back in those days when you first walk into the house uh, this is the front entryway there is a stained glass window up above the door and and everything was um, your entryway was you wanted everyone to be very impressed with your entryway so a lot of uh, on the ceiling the walls were painted green on the ceiling there was stenciling you can kind of see a little of that here but in this original stained glass window there's two pink circles and they kind of look like a pineapple uh, pineapples were a sign of wealth and hospitality and welcome and so somewhere in the house we probably had a pineapple sitting around so uh, the uh, woodwork throughout the house is all Minnesota white pine to get the design and the woodwork like here and you, you can see it more on the pictures but um, they use feathers kind of like your faux painting years ago you know they run the, the feather through and make the design here again uh, up above the chandelier when you'd walk in the house um, there'd be a medallion around the chandelier on the ceiling and that was made out of horsehair and plaster so uh, and the, all of their several medallions throughout the house all uh, impress another impressive I, my camera doesn't take very good pictures but this is a hall tree um, also, too, if a, a, a salesman came to sell something to Mr. Ham and he didn't want to be disturbed or he didn't want to talk to the salesman, they'd set him on this comfortable chair here and he'd either get tired of waiting and leave or, or just leave. But then he knew Mr. Ham would be here because his coat and hat, beaver skin hat, would be here on the hall tree. Uh, when you first came into the ham house, there would be the uh, staircase. Um, the staircase, the, the banister is all uh, black walnut and very impressive. And that goes all the way up to the cupola. On the top of the house, there is a cupola on the third floor. Um, it was kind of like a lookout tower before all the trees grew up, you know. So hams would go up there and they would watch the boats going going by and such too. Um, for fire safety reasons, we can't take people up to the cupola. I do sometimes, depending on who you are. <laughs> but um, they don't use, they just use the upstairs for storage and such too. When you'd first, your guests would first arrive, they'd go into the parlors. Um, the, uh, this would be the formal parlor. It's got, this is unique chairs. All three of the chairs are connected. And so kind of, they call it like a gossip seat because all three of you would be sitting on the, these chairs here. Uh, a lot of the furniture in, in the parlors would be Rococo design. Also too, you can't really see it in here, but there were no screens or curtains on the windows, so they would have shutters. So your shutters would help protect, keep the bugs out and such too. So children don't like to hear that. So. Um, this picture here is uh, a picture, any idea what the picture would be made out of years ago? Probably some of you historical hair. people. Oh, hair. Hair. Uh, we have a, two or three uh, hair pictures, and when the girls would comb their hair, brush their hair, they'd save all their strands and then tie it into little um, knots, and then they'd make a, a, these are all kind of flowers. Also in the parlors, we have the stereo opticoms. Have you ever had a Viewmaster when you were young? 
Um, the stereo opticoms are quite popular. You know, you hold it up and then you slide it to adjust it, and, and uh, um, so th they're qu they're quite popular back in those days because they didn't have any. They, they didn't know TVs or no iPads or no everything. So everything, you know, when you came to visit, you'd have to it'd be entertained. Same with, in this parlor, there'd be a piano. All little girls would, were taught how to play the piano when they were young. And so that was a treat when you'd get to stay up late for the dances and you'd get to play the piano. So. Uh, Oh, another thing too with the, the when you first came into the ham house on the stairway, there was a it's called it was a post, and that's called a new all, and sometimes there'd be a secret compartment in the new all that people would hide their important papers or maybe small guns or something, maybe sometimes too there'd be like a wooden pineapple on on top of the post top of the new wall. Um, we've had the kids press all the buttons, but we can't find a secret compartment in ours. I wish we could. It'd be a lot more fun for the kids. So. But that's... Uh, okay, now when uh, you go into the other side, like when you walk into the ham house, to the right is the two parlors, to the left is the library and the um, dining area. Um, when you would come for to eat a meal, sometimes you would have four, six, eight course meal. Um, between each course, the men would go in the library, women would go in the parlors. They'd shut the pocket doors. The servants, they didn't have a lot of servants, uh, so when they had a party, they would just hire people, you know, neighbors or whatever to come and help young people, young girls and, and boys. And uh, we have a set of dishes here. They are made in England. Um, there was a family from Dubuque, their last name was... My mind went... <laughs> uh, oh dear. Uh, anyway, they had four sons. I'll think of it. Yeah. They had four sons, and each of the, the wives had a set of dishes. And uh, so we have the red set here. Uh, but like when you'd come for the, uh, the meal, of course, children were never allowed in uh, the dining area until they learned their manners. Manners were taught no elbows on the table, no talking unless you were talked spoken to. Um, and uh, anyway, so then uh, children a lot of times didn't get to eat when, when you had guests. So. This is another, it's, it's called an Audubon table. Uh, you've heard of John J. Audubon Prince. Uh, he was a famous artist. There would be about 300 prints to a book, and you'd buy a book and then you would display them in this table built especially for the Audubon prints. In the kitchen we have a, lot, a table set up. This white, kind of tall, uh, cone-shaped thing. It was a very expensive piece of, uh, oh, what would it be? You use it all the time. Sugar. Sugar was very expensive and it came in a cone like this. And then, uh, oh, getting back to the dining room, uh, the only thing that you could eat with your fingers was bread. <laughs> so when we have children, we tell them, you know, when they go to eat their lunch or, or supper, uh, the only thing they can pick up with their fingers is bread. So everything else needed utensils. So. Ups, going upstairs um, would be the bedrooms. Um, and in the bedrooms, um, you have all of you ridden the 4th Street elevator, or Fenelon Place elevator, it's also called. 
um, the gentleman that built that, a Mr. Graves, he also had this dollhouse built for his children. And the house, dollhouse on the front is a replica of some apartment buildings down downtown across from the post office. And uh, so, so that in that room it has like a uh, chamber pot. Of course, you know what the chamber pot was for. <laughs> And uh, children don't like to hear that either. <laughs> there was no restroom in, in the house. Um, and then also, too, in this picture, we're same with the Dow House. Uh, over on the dresser is a little girl's hoop. Uh, little girls would start wearing hoops, corsets, and dresses at the age of five. Little boys would wear dresses until they were six. So. <laughs> So, and this hoop, would have, it would have been metal. Our hoops are, are plastic, but theirs would have been metal. So you can imagine little girls, you know, wearing. And uh, they would wear, they would start wearing corsets at age five. Um, any idea how many inches the lady's waist would be? Oh my gosh. Oh. No. 18 inches. They did have a lot of breathing problems, a lot of health problems. A lot of health problems. I'm just glad we don't have to wear them. There is, a, a, like when you go on a self-guided tour, on in a, most all the rooms there's a uh, uh, a board that has information about the rooms, telling all the different things that are in the rooms. I thought this was uh, kind of neat. It says, did you know public schools were established in Dubuque in 1856? <coughs> Way back in 1856. So, uh, you know, I think too, I think I skipped over the, the schoolhouse. We have a one-room schoolhouse. Uh, it was located out on the west end of Dubuque in Centralia, or Asbury. Um, it's called the Humkey School, built in 1833. And uh, in about in 1965 to 1969, when they started consolidating all the schools and sending the children into uh, into town, um, this was closed, and then some concerned citizens got together and they moved it from Centralia to here. So it's been here since 1969, and this, like I say, this is all on the that you'll see on the outside of the Matthias Ham House. Uh, all this is is on the inside and uh, so uh, that concludes your tour of the Matthias Ham House. <laughs> I still can't think of the, the all the sons. <laughs> um, but anyway. I have a question. Uh -huh. Is there lead right up there where they lived? There would have been lead. Uh-huh. Are there descendants of the family still in the view? No. All of the descendants have moved away. And uh, uh, every once in a while, there'll be someone that'll come and say, oh, I was related. You know, and we try and get as much information from them as we can. So. Did Julia Dubuque ever stay in that house? Not, not that I know of. No. He probably visited. Okay. But I also too, when Sarah sold the house to the city of Dubuque in 1911. Um, oh. <laughs> anyway, the city of, of Dubuque, the uh, city parks and recreation guy, him and his family, they lived in the house for a while. In fact, in all the rooms throughout the house is all the beautiful molding on the top. He didn't like all the molding in the one in his office, so he took all the molding off. Oh, no. so. oh, Doris, 
Doris, you said something about it's open at uh, around yeah. Christmas time. Do you mm. know what those dates are? Or? I'm sorry, I should have checked before. I think it's just on a Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and I, I, I think it's, it's you're charged for self-guided tour. It's the 750 um, for the self-guided. Do, do you have more than one dress that you ever wear there? Or is that your main dress? Uh, I don't have another dress. Some of the girls that were working for Christmas, but I'd be gone to Arizona. They had a, a really nice dress made, like velvet and such. And uh, so, but I was never there for eight for eight years. I I was in Arizona, wintered in Arizona. So, uh, you said it's considered haunted. Nope, those go back Okay, there's a lot of different sayings going around. And uh, our first curator, she never wanted anyone to promote uh, the house being haunted. And uh, but now the curator we have now, she's a young girl, <laughs> and she she thinks you know if we promote it, we'll have more people come into the house. But uh, I don't know. There's a few places in Dubuque they say they have seen. Uh, there's a young gal, not a young gal, middle-aged gal that I work with. The other day she said she was in the entryway, and I walked in from the gift shop to, to visit with her. She said, oh, you should have come here a minute ago. She saw a, a spirit or something uh, of a little boy up on the top of the steps. I don't know. But then also when Sarah, the daughter Sarah, lived in the house, um, <laughs> the story is that a pirate, because there were a lot of pirates on the river, that a pirate broke in and uh, and he supposedly shot um, towards Sarah, and he missed. And so there's a, hole, a bullet hole in the door. And there is a door up on third floor that has a hole in it. <laughs> I don't know. But then, then the story is that, uh, uh, no, Sarah heard some commotion, so she called the police. And the police came, and the one policeman got scared, and, <laughs> and he shot the bullet. And that's wow. the hole in the <laughs> Supposedly, another story is there was a trail of blood. She shot at the pirate and, and wounded him, and there's a trail of blood going down to the river. I, you know, there's a lot of rumors, a lot of. Uh, did there any children that long they lived in that house that they would think a child had died there? There were a few children that died, three of them. Uh, but it, were you thinking of like ghosts? Right, or ghosts. Yeah. 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 No, I think back in those days it was more they had contact, pneumonia, or, you know. Another thing too I forgot to mention from 1905 to 1907, uh, Dr. Kegler had a cancer research in the house, and um, he installed dormers up on, on uh, oh, up here. He installed dormers for more air circulating throughout the house, and uh, but then since they've taken the dormers off because they weren't the original uh, part of the house. The house does belong to the uh, his, uh, National Register of Historic Places. So that's another thing too, like when they want to make repairs, they, there's a lot of rigmarole that they have to go through to have the repairs done. So, because you have to have a certain type of wood or, or, uh, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Are there bathrooms in the house now? Uh, there are actually. There's two bathrooms. Yes, there is a in the the lower level. 
Um, there is a kitchen. Uh, they used to have what's called progressive dinners, and they would fix the dinners downstairs. People would come by a bus, people that would come into Dubuque, uh, they'd come by bus, and then they would, their first stop would be the ham house, and they would have chicken salad on a croissant and like a, a fruit, you know, strawberries or whatever. And, uh, and so there is a kitchen downstairs. There also, if you do come to the ham house, ask to see the video. There's a 10 minute video of life of Mr. Ham. Very interesting. It, it tells all more uh, the history of his life and such. And uh, so that's interesting to see the video. Any other questions? Yeah. I want to thank Doris for this quarter. Uh, I apologize to her and to you that we didn't have our pictures up there. That's okay. But um, hopefully we can, because we videotape, we can add the pictures and put it on YouTube. If we can't figure out how to do that, which we're not very good at figuring out things, <laughs> at least I'm not, <laughs> we'll put the pictures up and maybe we can get Doris to come back and talk about each of the pictures sometime later on. Would you do that? That'd be fine. Then that would Thank all be Thank you all for coming too, for everybody to see. So.